the case of Matt Hickey, feminist educated sexual predator. On June 8, the Seattle based newspaper, The Stranger, published a damning article about a Seattle based freelance journalist and technology blogger named Matt Hickey. Coincidentally, Matt has been a contributing author to The Stranger in the past. The article describes a scheme in which Matt concocted to prey upon women who were looking to get into the porn industry. At the time the article was published, six women had come forward with very similar allegations against him, most of which anonymously. One woman, Liz Shearer, has come forward with her true identity claiming that Matt posed as a female on Facebook to proposition her into an audition for the porn company the fictitious woman supposedly worked for. Allegedly, Matt used the female avatar to set up meetings with women where they would audition to be in future shoots, getting paid a few hundred dollars an hour for the shoot. If the victims would ask to video chat with the female avatar, Matt would tell them that the video camera on the fictitious woman's computer was broken. Once the meeting was set up, the fictitious woman would claim that she couldn't make it, but that her cameraman who was named Matt, was going to show up in her place. He would then pressure them into having sex with him, potentially on camera, to prove that they were up to the job of porn actresses. Alcohol was involved, apparently, since the story's publishing. More women have come out against Matt online, claiming he always seemed creepy, or that he took advantage of them in some way. While the official opinion of Common Sense Gender Network in regards to all allegations of crimes is that they should be taken with skepticism, this does not seem like something that is likely fabricated. In examining Matt's friend group via Facebook, it is clear that he knows many attractive women though photographs of his reveal that he is not a particularly attractive man. Furthermore, his occupation as a writer makes it particularly believable that he would be able to orchestrate such an elaborate scheme to prey on vulnerable women who needed to make some fast cash. It is of the opinion of Common Sense Gender Network that anybody who could actually do this type of thing repeatedly is probably some sort of sociopath so their actions are not to be representative of the average individual. However, what is most interesting in examining his friend group, is that he knew several very well-known feminists in prominent positions. Having written for The Stranger, which is a very left-leaning and progressive publication, it would be almost impossible not to know several feminists. He is, or was, personal friends with Lindy West, for example who is a body-positive feminist who has written in the past for Jezebel, has a regular column in The Guardian, and just released a novel called Shrill, which has been positively reviewed by Lena Dunham. Lindy West has written about such topics as rape culture extensively, the negativity of rape jokes in comedy, and even in-depth analysis into men who harass women on the internet. Knowing that Matt was buddies with Lindy West puts these allegations in an entirely new light, one where it is impossible not to reflect a bit on his knowledge of feminism. Matt clearly didn't just know a little bit about feminism. I think it is safe to say that Matt knew the feminist playbook backwards and forwards, likely very deliberately. Why wouldn't an extremely calculated sexual predator that preys on women via the internet train himself in the language of speaking persuasively to women? I am imagining he knew all of the current etiquette required to sound not just like a woman, but a feminist woman who was working in the porn industry, kindly mentoring women who wanted to reclaim their bodies for monetary gain in sex work. He likely chatted them up about these very subjects before meeting with them. How hard is it to picture him chatting casually about the various subtlety between exploitation and empowerment? Matt clearly knew all about what feminists describe as toxic masculinity. He probably gave almost zero hint of it. He was a nerdy guy who wrote about tech gadgets, not a dude bro in a frat that might have sex with an unconscious woman to impress his fraternity brothers, or whatever people think frat boys do under the influence of rape culture. We can safely assume Matt never referred to women as bitches, cons, or hoes. 
he clearly was able to pass the feminist entrance examination into their social circles. So why did he still do it? Again, this sounds like the work of a discerning sociopath. It would be unfair to blame feminism in any way for his predatory actions as there is no way feminist teachings could be construed into urging somebody into doing such things. However, it is very interesting to think about the idea that feminism actually strengthened his abilities to prey on women. Again, this is not the fault of feminism. If a pedophile were to study child psychologists to help them manipulate the children they preyed upon, nobody would blame the field of psychology for this type of behavior. So once again, do not blame feminism for this, men's rights advocate type people, I'm thinking of you. Still, let this be a reminder to feminists, your ideology is only so powerful. It would seem from observing feminist corners of the internet that many versions of feminism believe that men can be trained not to rape. The overt emphasis on teaching consent to people through the age of preschool to college implies that these teachings might decrease rape and other predatory behavior. When people give advice on how to avoid finding oneself in such circumstances, it is now frequent for feminists to accuse the giver of said advice of being a victim blamer. They seem to believe that training people to avoid being victims is of minuscule importance because training men and boys not to rape is the only surefire way to stop rapes from happening. But apparently, even after all of this information about consent is learned, there will always be rapists. Not only that, but apparently there will always be men like Matt who will be crafty enough to use this type of rhetoric to better prey upon women. The solution here is not to get rid of all men, in case any women were thinking that. Rather, I think the only advice I can give to anybody concerned with such matters is to have open dialogues as much as possible. Perhaps it might be helpful not to jump down the throat of somebody who offers safety precautions against such predators in good faith. Perhaps people shouldn't unfriend or block people on social media who have differing opinions on such matters. Perhaps people should be unafraid to discuss the intricacies of how sexual predators operate on the internet without the demand of trigger warnings. If not, perhaps one of your friends might be the next victim of somebody like Matt.